Hi, thanks for joining me for this second part of my depth of field series. The aim of this series is to show you how to get great shots like this with out of focus backgrounds. If you didn't see part one of this series, I covered all the technical details about what depth of field is. So you can check it out up here or down below in the description if you want to go and get some more technicalities. But in this video, I'm going to be all about the practicality and using the camera. In case you didn't see part one, depth of field is basically how much of the image is acceptably sharp. Everything that's not in focus is outside the depth of field. So why do you want the background out of focus? Mainly, an out of focus background is not going to be distracting. It won't compete with the main subject. So if you look at this shot here, you can see that the bird stands out because the background is not confusing. If we compare it to this shot, where the background is less out of focus, all of the background twigs start competing with the bird and start to make it a lot more messy, not as pleasing. So as I said in part one, there are three things that affect the depth of field. The first is the aperture, and that is the diameter of the hole inside the lens. The second thing is the focal length, which is how long the lens is. And the third one is the distance from the subject to the camera. I'm gonna cover all of these in this video. Before you can start thinking about getting your background out of focus, you must ensure that your subject is in focus. It's worth getting a depth of field app that you can download onto your phone for free that will help you calculate the amount of depth of field you're gonna get with any particular settings. Here, I've told the app that I wanna use an F number of 7.1, that I'm gonna use a focal length of 500 millimeters and that the subject is gonna be six meters away. This gives me a depth of field of 5.87 centimeters, which is plenty to make sure that the whole of a small bird is in focus. Here, I've changed the settings only slightly. I've brought the subject closer by two meters, so it's now four meters away, and I've only changed the f-stop by widening it by two thirds of a stop to 5.6, and that has the effect of changing the depth of field down to 1.9 centimeters, which could mean that the head of the bird is in focus, but the tail of the bird is not. So keep all of that in mind throughout this next practical section. I'm very lucky here at home to have a hide so I can control the distance from the subject to the camera. So you can see here, I've got the lens coming out of the hide. And if we go over this way, this is where the perch is. It's about, five meters away from the hide. So I can be sure that I'm gonna get a good depth of field. To demonstrate the effect that aperture can have on depth of field, I've set up a little demonstration here. Over here, I've got the lens which is set to 500 mil. And over this side, I've got a lens calibration tool which has a scale on it that can be used to work out how much is in sharp focus. The only thing that I've changed in this demonstration is the aperture. The distance, the focal length have all stayed the same. So in the first picture, I set the aperture to f5.6. In the second picture, I changed the aperture to f16. And I think it's quite obvious that the numbers on the scale in the second picture are a lot clearer from front to back. Whereas in the first picture, they fall out of focus very quickly. Therefore, the first step in trying to get the background out of focus is to try and get the aperture as wide as possible while still keeping the subject in focus. For this demonstration, the main thing that I've changed is the focal length. So I've got out my smaller lens and I've set the focal length to 35 millimeters and taken this shot. The second shot I took using my 500 millimeter lens and got this one. Now, I did need to get closer to the subject with this lens to make it as big in the frame. But even with that in mind, the background still hasn't been thrown as much out of focus with the shorter lens. If we put them both up to compare, with the shorter lens, the background still hasn't been thrown quite as much out of focus as it has with the longer lens, despite being closer to the subject. 
Finally, what I want to try and demonstrate is how changing the distance from the subject to the background can affect the depth of field. So here I've got a plastic screen that I use behind my subjects. It's, it's like a plastic hedge simulation, but it works really well to create a natural background. But what I can do is I can move this backwards and forwards. In this first shot, the screen was two meters behind the subject, and you can see that you can still pick out quite a lot of detail in the hedge. I then move the screen to four meters behind the subject, and this starts to throw the background much more out of focus. The final shot was with the screen six meters behind the target, and you can see now that we've just got a, almost a smudge of colours and it's completely diffused. So, to sum up, to get a good out of focus background, these are the main points. First, make sure that your subject is in focus. Second, make sure you choose the widest aperture you can. Next, choose the longest focal length that you've got available. And finally, make sure that the background is as far away as possible. I'll finish this video by leaving you with a few of my recent shots of birds from my hide. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this short series really useful. If you have any suggestions for future videos, drop them below in the comments and I'll try and get round to them. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, but for now, stay safe and I'll see you soon.